Hi, thank you for tuning in to the episode 3.5 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. In this video, we will continue talking about explicit offload programming model and we'll cover function offloads, memory usage and data retention, as well as asynchronous offload to multiple coprocessors in the next video. In our example for last episode, we offloaded a flat piece of C++ code. Now let's try offloading a more complex code that contains functions. First, we'll move the matrix multiplication into a separate function. We'll call it multiplication and pass in all the parameters. Let's quickly verify this code by disabling offload region and running the application on the host. And the function works as expected. Now let's try offloading this function to the coprocessor. First, let's naively try to simply place the function in the offload region and then compile. This unfortunately leads to an compilation error. The issue is that only the portion of the code that is marked for offload gets compiled for the coprocessor. Our new function was defined outside of the offload region, so it was not compiled for the coprocessor. We can fix this by marking the function for offload by using the qualifier attribute target make. This qualifier tells the compiler to compile the code that follows for the coprocessor. Let's put this in front of the multiplication function. Now we can compile and when we run the code, we see that it is in fact offloaded. Note that DecalSpec qualifier can be used instead. Intel compilers for Linux operating systems support both of them. But if you are developing for Windows OS, use DecalSpec qualifier since only prior is supported by Intel compilers for Windows. This attribute or DecalSpec qualifiers may be useful not only for marking functions, but also for marking certain data containers. Specifically, it applies to global variables and static function variables. Let's see what happens if we move the array b and the constant integer n outside of the main function. When we try to compile, we get an error. This is again because only the regions marked for offload are compiled for the coprocessor and transferred there. Therefore, proper declaration should be used. To mark global variables for offload, we should use attribute target nick again. We'll add this qualifier in front of array b. Now when we compile, the error for array b is gone, however the error for n is still there. Even if a variable is a globally defined constant, it is not offloaded by default. Only bitwise copyable data from the local scope will be transferred in and out of the coprocessor at the offload automatically, if not specified otherwise. For synchronization of pointer-based types and complex data structures, for instance C++ objects and linked lists, Virtual Shared Memory Model, or MIO, should be used. We'll talk about it in a few episodes. For global and static variables, don't forget to add special qualifiers for synchronization at the offload. So, after we add the attribute in front of n as well, we are able to compile. And we see that the code did execute on the mic and that result is correct. For complicated programs with many functions and global defined variables, it can be tedious to put attribute target mic in front of everything. In such cases, you can use pragma offload attribute push target mic and pragma offload attribute pop. All functions and variables between those two programs will be marked for offload to the coprocessor. We can compile and run the code. And we see that the application was offloaded and that we get the correct result. Constant values in the source code also can be specified with define preprocessor directive. The define creates a macro, which is the association of an identifier with a token string. After the macro is defined, the compiler can substitute the token string for each occurrence of the identifier in the source file. The preprocessor examines the code before actual compilation of the code for the host and coprocessor begins and resolves all those directives, substitutes all the token strings before any code is actually generated. Therefore, define directive can be safely used without modification to offload constants to the coprocessors. So far, we have seen how to offload functions, local and global variables, and pointer-based arrays using pragma offload. Now, let's look at how to do more sophisticated marshalling using explicit offload, which can be important for the performance tuning. Using the offload report, we can see that the application transfers 8 megabytes of data at every offload. The bulk of this data traffic is from the transfer of the matrix A. However, in our matrix vector multiplication application, the matrix A does not change. 
Thus, we are transferring the same data repeatedly to the coprocessor. To address this issue, we'll implement data retention for matrix A, so that we only offload it once and reuse it in subsequent offloads. This requires two steps, retaining the memory buffer for data between offload and avoiding unnecessary data movement. First, let's retain the memory buffer for A. By default, coprocessor allocates a buffer for incoming data at the start of the offload region, then frees the buffer at the end of the offload region. This behavior can be modified by adding a lock if and free if clauses to the offload pragma. To transfer matrix A, we will use the offload transfer pragma, which offloads only data and not instructions. Notice that we did not specify a lock if here, because by default it is set to 1 or true. It means that it allocates a memory buffer before the offload. But we have free if set to 0, so that the memory buffer is not freed after the offload. The memory buffer will not be deallocated until it is explicitly freed with free if, and the data is kept there until it is overridden by subsequent offload. Second, let's retain the data of matrix A in that buffer. To do that, in our main offload, we will switch from in clause to no copy clause so that data from matrix A is not transferred, because it is not modified during the execution. Then, we'll add a lock if with argument 0 and free if with the argument that is true if the current iteration is the final iteration. This will prevent memory buffer deallocation for A in all offloads, except the last one. Now, let's compile and run the application with offload report. Here we can see that the amount of data transferred drops to 800 kilobytes, compared to the 8 megabytes before we implement data retention. In some applications, performance may be limited by data transfer between the host and the coprocessor. If it is possible to implement data retention, as shown here, it may improve the performance of those applications. In this episode, we covered additional features of the explicit offload programming model, which is designed for bitwise copyable data. In the next episode, we will see how to use virtual shared memory to offload not only scalars and arrays of basic types, but also pointer-based data structures, C++ classes and objects, and so on. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.